All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Real Talk Tuesday with Hate is a Virus. Um, before we begin, I do want to introduce myself. My name is Michelle Hanabusa, and I'm one of the co-founders of Hate is a Virus. I am really excited to bring on two guests today, um, one of them, which is Dr. Karen Koimatsu. She is the founder and executive director of the Fred T. Koimatsu Institute. Um, and she is also the daughter of the late civil rights icon, Fred Koimatsu. So welcome, Karen. Thanks, Michelle. Great to, great to be with you. And um, I love, uh, I love what you and your organization uh, do, especially at this um, at this time. So, I think these are are timely conversations that we uh, that we need to have. Thank you. Yes, and um, you know. We, we were able to connect on uh, different fronts over the last few months and I'm um, just very honored and grateful to have these conversations with you. I'm excited to bring this live for more um, folks to be able to see this and learn and experience all of this. And um, so, you know, uh, Karen, I gave, you, I gave a very brief um, introduction about you, but would love to hear more about who you are, what you do, um, you know, what your passions are. Uh, well, thanks, th thanks, Michelle. Uh, I, I founded the um, Fred T. Cormonson Institute in 2009, and it was really the charge that my father gave me to carry on with education uh, about um, five months before he passed away, and that was back in, in 2005, because he, you know, he didn't want something like the Japanese American incarceration to happen again. And, uh, and that's why he crisscrossed this country um, after his uh, federal conviction was overturned when they found the evidence that there was no, um, you know, there was no reason for the Japanese Americans to, to be put in, in, in prison camps. And actually at the time of my father's uh, Supreme Court hearing, uh, and we know about Supreme Courts these days, don't we? that um, they, the Department of Justice had lied to the Supreme Court, had altered evidence and destroyed evidence. And so this seems to be you know, a, a pattern that we see and that we all need to be mindful of. And, uh, but I didn't know, you know when, he, when, when my father said, you, know, you, you have to carry on with education, I didn't know what that looked like. I, I, I struggled with that because I'm not an attorney uh, I didn't feel comfortable about talking uh, and discussing, you know, the legal aspects of his case. I mean, it's something really I've learned over the years, uh, and I, I, I didn't really know how to, to go about doing that. I partnered with another organization, uh, and and that's kind of how this all, you know, evolved. Um, and and actually, it was um, in in California it was a assembly member Warren Fuitani who. Uh, came to me to, to, to see if it would be okay to establish a day in my father's name. And I thought, wow, you know, that's a great way to carry on his, his legacy. And, and he said, but, you know, it's, it's more than, than that, than, than just the honor, which is great, right? It's, it's a, because the full name is Fred Korematsu Day of Civil Liberties and the Constitution. And the emphasis is our civil liberties and constitution, which is obviously we need to, to keep fighting and upholding our, our, our constitution and keep fighting for our democracy. And so uh, that's why we just celebrated the 10th anniversary on, on January 30th and, and you and um, your organization uh, were generous to let us um, show your, your, your video about hate, hate is a virus, because I think that that's a, an important message and that we, we need to, especially because uh, with this anti-Asian you know, violence and negative rhetoric that uh, is, is obviously still <laughs> going on, that we, we need to, to speak up and uh, as my father said, and uh, and make people accountable for for their for their actions. But at the same time, this gives us the opportunity to uh, work in solidarity, to work with other organizations, like to partner with with your organization 
in uh, in making sure that people are are aware of of these situations that they feel that they um, have a sense of belonging. I think mm -hmm. that's also important, but also we need to be activists. We all need now to be activists. We can't just think that, oh, someone else is gonna take care of the problem, right? Because, you know, what I try to, to emphasize is, is, is be part of the solution, not the problem. And it's something to keep in mind, even in this COVID lockdown, we can, you know, we can all do our part in, um, in having these conversations, which is, which is really important and, and very, you know, we have to be purposeful uh, and, and not shy away from them. Absolutely. I 100% I agree with you on that. And um, I think that's what we've been seeing a lot, right, on, on social media, especially um, with the younger generations kind of seeing this is not the time to be silent. We have to speak up. But I think that uh, that term speak up also brings um, different questions and also, um, you know, people within their activism work or people who are just finding out about, you know, why it is that there is a rise in anti-Asian hate crimes happening right now, right? But um, I think it's kind of going back into history and really learning and educating ourselves about why these things exist. Um, and so there's different levels of, of I guess, um, where people are at right now and how do you even have these conversations? Um, do, you, do you have any advice on, you know, where people can start going if they are new to all of this? Well, I, I think, I mean, thanks. You have to use the positive of, 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 the, uh, of the internet and the social media um, certainly is highlighting, you know, different organizations that are, uh, are, are picking up this, you know, this fight and the, and the education. But you know, also, if in order for for people to determine for themselves how they are going to be activists, they um, they need to know their own story as well, and that's what I try to encourage. I mean, one reason I wanted to um, to speak um, with with your your audience uh, in in February is because we just uh, acknowledged, I will say. Uh, day of Remembrance, which, which is on February 19th, uh, the day in 1942 when President Roosevelt issued Executive Order 9066. And that was the executive order. We all know now about executive orders, right? Um, but that was the executive order that forcibly removed everyone of Japanese ancestry from their home. And I also want to point out that this is the Japanese American, you can call it internment, um, I think the the current um, uh, um, you know really description is incarceration or concentration camp or let's call it what it was right but it was here in America and that's a time when you know we uh, want to uh, to to honor uh, and uh, and to reflect but also to educate right, everyone else about those experiences that the Japanese Americans had in, uh, in 1942, because two thirds of, of 120,000 people of Japanese an of ancestry were American citizens. And um, uh, a third of, of, of them were children under the age of 18. So, you know, people don't realize those types of, that part of history, it may be just a blurb of a date, and, and that's not gonna get us very far because what it points up to is, is now in my activism that my next, my next charge is ethnic studies and to have ethnic, ethnic studies and in, in not only just as, a, um, as a, um, a course in high school, but um, California now is, is uh, determined to have, uh, have it as a, a graduating requirement for seniors, one semester of ethnic studies uh, because ethnic studies is, is, is the overall is about learning of our different cultures and our, our different ethnicities and uh, the struggles, right? So this, this country since the time of our um, uh, American Indian uh, you know, uh, friends have, have been marginalized, right? And so now we're dealing, uh, I mean, uh, the positive, I guess, if you, if you would say of COVID is at least with Black Lives Matter, 
has has instead of becoming a moment has is now a movement, right? And right. to address, um, we're all we're now aware of HR 40, which is a um, a, a congressional bill, um, a House Representative congressional bill that at least would start uh, focusing on the redress and reparations, hopefully for uh, you know for African Americans that were you know their families were enslaved, you know they were kidnapped. And brought over to this country and and uh, and, and 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 you know and became slaves, right? They were, they were, and, and the point of that is they were tr they were treated you know with with no respect, and that's what mm -hmm. we've lost in this country. So even Japanese Americans during the time of World War II, it was you know they were treated you know with you know with racial discrimination, right? With with prejudice, um, with hate. I mean, the, the hate in this country has, has, has gone from you know, one century to the next century to generations. And now we have the opportunity, especially your generation, younger people, to be able to, to take up and understand that, that we need to, to break that chain of hate. You know, now is the time to break that chain of hate. We have a new administration. We, it's you know, not gonna happen overnight. Uh, but we, as I said, to work in solidarity, but we, we also, so we need to, like if you're fighting for HR 40 to know the history of, of African Americans that were, that, that, you know, that they were slaves, that they were treated, you know, uh, I mean, just like, you know, property, right? With no, with no respect at all. Um, you know, I want to say animals because we, we, uh, you know, we treat animals better than we treated mm -hmm. African Americans in their, in, you know, being enslaved and the Japanese Americans who were put in horse stalls. And as my father said, when his case was reopened in 1983 and making a statement to the court, you know, horse stalls are, are you know, for horses, not for people. You know, they, they, that's where they had to live in, in conditions that were unsanitary, that um, the horse stall smelled like manure. The walls were just whitewashed. Uh, they had food that that was not part of their diet. Uh, there was right. dysentery. You know, those are the kinds of that's the kind of history that we have in this country. I mean, obviously, we want to look at the good things. You know, that happened, like people that during the Japanese American incarceration, farmers, um, you know, Caucasian farmers that over that took care of the Japanese American farms why people were in prison. You know, there, there are those good stories, but if we don't, if we don't understand what people's struggles for Latinos, uh, Latina X, that now, you know, we, we're, we're even separating families at the border, you know, we've got immigration issues. I mean, we, we have so many issues. You just, you know, just check all the boxes, you know, we, we really don't have a problem in, in finding a cause, but it's, but it's also right. knowing yourself and and moral principles are something that I didn't think ever needed to be taught. I thought people were, were kind of raised with moral principles and grew up in those kinds of families. And obviously I was very lucky to experience parents who, who did that, but mm -hmm. not everyone does because you come to these crossroads in life and you, you have to decide whether you're gonna go down this one or you're gonna go down this one. And this one may be great and this one may be bad. You know, those are the decisions in life that we all have to, to make uh, because uh, we can say, you know, and, and I can tell you it's, there's no such thing as, you know, when people say, oh, that's not fair. Well, life is not fair. You know, I'm, I've lived a long, a long enough time to, to, to be able to say that. And, right. and, and, but at the same time, you know, we, we make our own lives. I mean, it's, it's not something that someone gives us. We, we need to, to, we've got one chance. We've got one chance. And think about the 500,000 people who have just died of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And thanks to, to our president and vice president, Kamala Harris, who comes from California, my friend, that, you know, we, we you know, they are now recognizing and honoring those people who've lost their lives because you have one chance and, and we all need to work together to, to, to make ourselves, um, sorry, um, stronger, 
You know, it's absolutely it's, uh, uh, a matter of of humanity, mm-hmm. and and we need to find the humanity. And it sounds simple, but be kind to each other. Yes, you know, to be kind yes. to each other, and have that kind of of respect. Because for, and, 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 and to appreciate each other's differences, you know, we, it, and if you, if you are, you know, if you're ignorant about them, then you're going to be afraid of them. Mm. So what I say is, is prejudice is, is ignorance and the way to, to fight that and, and is uh, our, really our most powerful tool is education um, right. that we need I, I, to. Activate. Yes, yes, I, I, I totally agree with you on that. And I think something that stuck with me from our conversation last night when we were just um, talking about what we what we were going to talk about today is, um, you know, t- talking to your family and your father and your mother about your own history, you know, like, like having those conversations and a lot of times the people who are closest to you you don't even have those conversations right Right. um and i think what really like stuck with me is just even your experience of not even really knowing who your father was until you hit a certain time period within your school and realizing all of that could you share a little bit more uh, about that and then how you got into the work that you're doing now um uh, yes well i was um uh, I, gr- I grew up in um, in the Bay Area, in the, in the East Bay, but it was very, it was a, an area that my father um, uh, was an uh, unincorporated area, and uh, and even back then, people of Japanese ancestry and even Asian couldn't buy houses. You know, there was this red line that that was going on at the time, um, and so the the high school that I attended was 2,500 students and and. There was only six Asian Americans in the entire school, mm. and uh, in high school, in um, uh, in my um, uh, history class, my friend um, Maya was giving a book report, uh, and it was called the book was called Concentration Camps USA, and of course it's my friend, so I was like paying attention that day, right? <laughs> you always pay attention, but and <laughs> so she and, and I thought concentration camps USA well what's that about mm-hmm. and then she goes on to talk about the Japanese American you know quote internment and I never had even heard about that before uh, and she you know describes these ter- terrible conditions and uh, you know it's uh, and it was it was kind of you know interesting because I would hear my my aunts uh, talking, um, you know, my, cause my mother is Caucasian and my father's Japanese, Japanese American. So my, you know, Japanese American family aunts would, would be talking about, oh, I remember this food from camp or, oh, I, I, I saw somebody from camp the other day and I thought it was like church camp or something. You know, I didn't know that it was about camps. And, and so Maya gets up and, and then she's, she's describing this time in, you know, in, in World War II. And uh, which wasn't that long. Uh, and she said, but there was this one man who resisted the military orders and it ended up to be a landmark Supreme Court case called Korematsu versus the United States. Oh, that's my name. And the only thing I knew is that Korematsu is a very unusual Japanese name, right? It's the only thing I knew. And, uh, and so I've got 35 pairs of eyes turning around looking at me and I'm shrugging my shoulders thinking <laughs> it was some black sheep of the family because she never said wow. that. Uh, and so after class, it was the last class of the day, fortunately. And I said to Maya, who's this about? She goes, this is about your dad. I said, no way. Somebody would have told me. So of course I go running home and, and confronting my mother and she goes, <clears throat> Yes, this is about your father. And then I got the standard answer. You'll have to wait until he gets home to ask him. Wow. So not only did my father have housing discrimination, he had um, employment discrimination and and he worked two jobs. So sometimes he, he didn't arrive home until eight o'clock at night and I mm. 
know it's calmed down by then. And if you see, you know, the the videos and the the film and everything about my father, you can tell that he was a a very quiet, um, really introverted, you know, person. He was very humble and very kind, uh, generous person. And I told him, I he knew Maya because Maya and I, Maya and I had been friends since we were like five years old. So that's the the other shocking part. part. Uh, and 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 he just said. It happened a long time ago, and what he did, he thought was right, and the government was wrong. Mm. That clear and simple. And I couldn't ask him any more questions because I saw this hurt go over his face, and it was like somebody sucked me in the stomach, and I was very close to my daddy. So mm. it, it, it from from this was I was in high school. This will figure out how you can tell my age. So I was, this is like 19, um, uh, uh, 60, 66, 67, I guess. And, and when my father's case was reopened, his Supreme Court case was reopened, it was 1983. And we never talked about it until his case was reopened. And, and it wow. was at that time that I, that I learned that my father had never given up hope that someday he would be able to reopen up his Supreme Court case, but he didn't know how to do that until people came to him and found and told him about the evidence uh, because of, of the the work that was going on with the, the start of the redress and reparations. And, uh, and, and so it, you know, that's, and the thing is also I want to point out that in 1942, when my father decided to, to disobey the military orders, uh, it was taken over to Tamferan Racetrack in, in the Bay Area, right in San Bruno. No one wanted anything to do with him. Mm -hmm. He was ostracized and vilified from day one, day one, because people thought if they associated with my father that some harm might come to them. So that's why a lot of ways I didn't know anything about my own, you know, my own heritage uh, and my father's story is because we didn't belong to the to the Japanese American organizations. Wow. At the time, the J the Japanese American Citizens League, um, you know, they they were they they looked down at the resistors, and my father was a type of resistor. So you know, it was interesting also that when his case was reopened in '83 that, um, and he won, he could have very well said to the Japanese American community, well, you didn't any want anything to do with, with me. Why should I have anything to do with you? But he wasn't like that. Mm. He, he, he just welcomed everyone with open arms and people would invite him to events and the JACL would invite him and he crisscrossed this country. That's one reason why he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1998 because of his his work and his fight for justice and it wasn't just for himself and the japanese american community it was for all americans because like i said that's he didn't want something like this to happen again so that's what all those years i was trying to figure out what 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 to do because um, and then people, because of, of my name and, and who I am, started asking me of my opinion. Um, and when my father died, you know, there were uh, amicus briefs. Amicus briefs are friends of the courts brief. So it's a, a, a paper that's, that's, uh, that's um, submitted to the court in support of a whatever the cause is. So, for example, the latest is Trump versus White, right? That had to do mm -hmm. with the, in, on January 27, 2017, that was the first executive order. That's when people said, oh, that's an executive order that Trump issued, right? That was the Muslim ban. That, right. was, that was against a, a, a religious group, right? That's when all these attorneys went to the airports, the matter, it didn't matter what type of attorney, real estate, whatever, they were gonna help people. To, to, to bring them in, you know, to fight the immigration battle at the airport. That's when we pulled together. And, and that was, that was, I would have loved for my, my father to, mm -hmm. right. And, and yeah. because of that, 
actually on January 30th, there's a Google Doodle. So if you if you Google Google Doodle, yes. Google Doodle to, it'll I, come up, right? I saw that. It was yeah. so powerful to see. Yeah. So that that's why. And and so and also that my my activism has has evolved. You know, it was I didn't want to talk in the very very beginning. I mean, no way. I just I'm not a public speaker, and now that's what I am. <laughs> so it's been a process, you know. Everyone, it's just practice. It's not mm -hmm. complicated. It's just practice. It's scary. It's putting yourself out there. I get criticized, you know. It's just. It, it's it, it and I'll, I'll never forget i did a radio interview with some guy that was down in, in los angeles and uh i guess this was um after uh, you know fred cormonta day had had just been uh just started back in i guess our first day was january 30th 2011 and then i went to uc berkeley campus to their radio station some guy was interviewing me and i said oh my father is a civil rights hero and he said oh well you can't say that why not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he says, well, what gives you the right to say that he's a hero? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and I was just, I mean, and I, I saw the producer in the other, in the, through the glass, and she saw how upset I was and, and afterwards apologized, you know, on behalf of this. <laughs> I, I won't say, that. I won't describe that. Oh my goodness. But, but I was, you know, I was visibly upset. And uh, it was a radio, so you couldn't, you know, my, my reaction is, you know, well, I said, well, other people have said that to me. Uh, and that's the way mm. that, and that people have thought about my father. And it's, it's been interesting because people will come up to me and say, Fred Cormatsu is my hero. And I, you know, it just really touches my heart. And they'll say, you know, that he's the reason they're, you know, my father is the reason that they have started their life in activism or that they have become an attorney or, you know, for a lot of different reasons, um, help their own, you know, identity, uh, wow. you know, because, and even I even had a, you know, an identity crisis because I was Hoppa, you know, I was, ha mm -hmm. what, I never fit in until I learned that word. I, I was, how old was I? I was um, uh, like 20, you know, 23 or 22 years old before I, I knew that, that word. And, uh, and it gave me identity because I was half Caucasian and, and half Japanese American. Uh, and so it's finding your own identity, finding your own cause, knowing yourself uh, yes. and, and asking questions. And it's, you know, sometimes you get, you know, people go, oh, well, you don't know what you're talking about. But I think, the one thing that I always remembered is my father knew himself. He, you know, he, he had the principles of right and wrong. It mm -hmm. wasn't complicated. He wasn't a complicated person. And he treated everyone like he wanted to be treated. And a lot of times people took advantage of him. So when I was older, I was always felt like I was trying to protect him. Oh, wow. And I could see that, you know, and uh, because he had such a, a, you know, a big heart. I mean, he wasn't, you know, uh, he wasn't, a, he wasn't perfect. You know, you, you have these kind of father daughter kind of, you know, issues, especially, <laughs> when you're, you know, and, yeah. um, um, but, uh, uh, you know, especially when at the time of your, you know, you get your driver's license and it's about driving the car and being home at a certain time and you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, why, Dad? <laughs> it's it's life. It's life. You know, it's life. Right. I just remember all that. You know, I remember it all with you know fondly, and uh, um, but I think you know it's you know now it's 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 finding those people mentors. I I'm uh, you know really promote people, especially students or people in in professions or whatever, finding mentors or finding someone that that you feel will inspire you uh, mm -hmm. it, it uh, you know it could be President Obama or um, you know it you know Maya, Maya Angelou or um, you know it's anybody right it's it's all these different you know Fred Korematsu or um, you know you just you know now we're um, you know people scientists 
uh, it's, you know, fashion, right? It's, it's uh, those people that you admire and, and then you learn about them. It's not just, it's just not knowing, knowing, knowing their name, right? It's, it's, it's knowing what they, what they've done, because I think any, any of us in life have, have, our, have had our struggles. And certainly right. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've been told no. So, you know, even when I wanted to, to start the, the Fred Korematsu Institute, um, and even before that, I started another uh, type of scholarship program. And, and I had people, even in my own community, saying, Karen, you can't do that. You're competing with us. So my, so my- and, and, and when you were hearing that, how, does, how did that make you feel? And also, like, how, how, what got you to push through all of that noise and, and push back? my father, because mm -hmm. he never took no for an answer. He never took no for an answer. And the fact that he, he never gave up hope for almost 40 years, 40 wow. years, you know, I, I mean, I don't want anybody to have to go through that, but almost 40 years to reopen up his Supreme court case when everybody would, you know, he used to talk about it maybe just to some other friends and they'd say, or his family or his brothers, you know, and even when he wanted to reopen up his Supreme court case, so this is 1983, as I, as I mentioned, and it was a start of the redress and reparations movement for Japanese Americans. You know, they were, they, they and I will, I will tell you, it was the civil rights movement of the 60s, the African Americans and the civil rights movement of the 60s that, that gave the, um, the, the, the support and the spirit to the Japanese Americans reparations movement, right? Yes. So yes. All, all, this is, that's what I'm talking about, knowing the history, knowing what what, what will fuel the fire, right? And, and so at that time that was ha happening and then people would say to my father, well, you can't reopen up your Supreme Court case because if you lose, it's gonna hurt our chances for redress and reparations hmm. from his own community again, hmm. you see? But he, you know, he just, he, he didn't, he didn't, he, he wasn't the person to say, well, no, you're wrong. He would just, he just wouldn't answer. He just- and he would just do he it. Just, he would just go on, keep, you know, whatever it took, just keep going wow. on. And, and that's what, you know, I've, I've, what I've had to do a lot of times is people go, no, Karen, you know, that, that's not going to work. You know, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And, and you have to just believe in yourself and just keep pushing on. And my father is my hero and my inspiration. And so that's why it's always help, helpful to find those people that, you know, when you have those doubts, you go, yeah, I'm not going to listen to them. I'm just, mm. I know. And, and to listen to yourself and your gut, your, your, your gut will tell you a lot. And, and, you know, over time it's listening, listening to yourself and you know, deep down what's right and wrong, you know, that, and then also it like my father, when he reopened up his Supreme court case, he wasn't doing this just for himself. Hmm. When you do, when you take action for other people, right? So he wanted, he wanted to fight this for all Americans. So when you take on a cause that is for others, whether it's, it's food banks or housing or the, fighting the hate violence, this isn't just for yourself. This is for your community. Uh, and your family and and your state and this nation that's when absolutely it, that's when it's fulfilling that's that's when it comes back to you i yes and you bring up a really interesting point because when i learned and it was it was a very just I didn't learn all the details of, of Fred Korematsu when I was growing up right even even just the 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 Japanese American incarceration, there was like one little sliver within <laughs> my history book. So it wasn't even really a story to be told or like talked about at that time. And um, w whenever I heard from Fred Koimatsu, I just thought of it like, oh, this is a Japanese American story, you know? And I think like diving more into, you know, the, the work that we're doing at Hate is a Virus, even just talking to you for the last couple months, it really opened my eyes to be like, Fred Korematsu was more than just that. It was more than just this Japanese American story. He stood for something so much bigger than that. And I feel like that was so powerful. And like, I really want people to know that, you know? 
Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And even what you're doing too, I know we talked a lot about your father, but like the work and the legacy that you continue to carry on um, throughout your life and your career, I think is very inspirational. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. I, you know, I think also what I encourage people to do is, you know, our lives get complicated, you know, over years, decades, you know, they will change whether you're in school or then you have families or you have work or whatever happens, taking care of parents when, mm -hmm. when they're older. I mean, you know, I've gone through all that. Um, but, you know, during, during your lifetime, making a difference, it, it can just be just little things. And if everyone, if everyone in this country just did a little bit, to, to make a difference for someone else, we would be a lot better off. But, you know, also we, we, we need to keep up the conversations and to talk, yeah. like you said, and to talk story. You know, the, the, I, I learned that really from, from um, you know, um, um, our native, you know, indigenous American Indians because they talk story. Right, mm. um, and and uh, and even the, the Latinos, you know, Latinx, they they talk story. They do a better job. Japanese Americans, you know, they very reserved. They keep everything in, <laughs> especially the older generation. Yeah, you know, so you have to kind of pry it out of them. Um, and and for a lot of Asian American families, that's that's the case. Uh, you know, but we it, when we can talk about. It, it's it's more than just a name and and just a, a generalization. It like you said, it's it's knowing the deeper story, right? Mm -hmm. Getting into the deeper roots, and in finding those those deeper roots, that helps you to grow, right? It's it's nurturing yourself, right? It's taking those nutrients from the earth, and then helping you to grow, because yeah. that's that's how we. You know that's how we become better, better people, better activists, um, and and just to you know just don't you know what just don't take no for an answer when you when you really believe in yourself and and the cause that you're that you're fighting for, but also you know I want to tell I mean it's it's been difficult during this time that because we've seen all this violence especially with protests uh, and you know, my father said protest, but not with violence. Otherwise, mm. they won't listen to you, but don't mm. be afraid to, to speak up. And, and it's hard sometimes. I mean, I, you know, I, back in the days of the Vietnam War, that was my era in college, you know, so we, you know, we did the sit-ins. <laughs> we did those sit-ins. We, you know, but we didn't, you know, did, we didn't damage property. Right. Uh, and uh, I don't really believe that you, some people say, I get pushback. Believe you me, I get pushback. Oh, well, you don't get anybody's attention if you don't damage property. Well, mm. I, I just, I, I don't agree because when you damage somebody else's property, then you're being dis disrespectful. It's just like mm. all those people who went to the Capitol Hill in Washington, DC and destroyed our Capitol and destroyed property and we're disrespectful. Do we think highly of them? No. Right, no. right. So it's, that's, you know, that's, that we've seen that, that with our own eyes. But if they, they had stood out maybe and, and just did their protest, you know, you might get some other people that, that might listen to them, but not when they, not, not the violence that they did. And that mm -hmm. was, that was so upsetting because I've been in, Speaker Pelosi's office, and I've been in Capitol Hill, and I, you know, it just was heartbreaking well, because this is yeah. the this is the people's house, and so we all need to keep that in mind when we, you know, when somebody says, "Oh, we're gonna go tear up this building, or we're gonna spray paint this, you know, graffiti or whatever," you know, it's just like, well, take the spray paint and create clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is like a dripping, uh, it almost looks like a spray paint. See? See? There you go. Right? Yes. Well, yes. That's positive. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I, I know, I, I feel like we can just talk on and on and on and on. I, I, I truly, truly enjoy it. Even, even yesterday when we were talking, right? It was like over an hour. I was like, 
this is so powerful. I can't wait to talk about these things tomorrow. Um, but you know, I guess, I guess as we, as we wrap up this conversation too, and, and I, we definitely need to do a part two. I'm so down. <laughs> Um, but you know, what, what is something that, um, the audience within hated the virus can take away? Like what's something that you just want, want people to hear and like take away from this conversation? Uh, well, I want, I want them to, to remember my father's words. Um, and you know, as I said, don't, you know, stand up for what is right is, is what he also, um, said. And that's something that we all, you know, all can do, uh, people, and, 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 and another thing, I'll give you a, a, just one quick thing that I, for, you know, I'd be remiss if I did not mention this. Go, go to the Korematsu Institute.org website. And if you know teachers and parents that are looking for a curriculum, they can sign up for our digital toolkit free of charge, right? Amazing. So that's what, you know, because of COVID, we realized we've had to do that. But now we're evolving, we're working on a new website, expanding our curriculum to be, uh, you know, ethnic studies, um, focus, but then if you look at our, our at our website now, one thing proudly that I that you will see is the the press press release from mm. uh, President Biden. On yes, I saw that. Um, that uh, because he was reinforcing the apology of the of the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, uh, which President Reagan signed. So that was the official mm -hmm. apology from the U.S. government. And, and which is what only, what the Japanese Americans really wanted the apology. I mean, you, if you don't, but if you don't throw money at it, you don't get anybody's attention. So, in, uh, and you can never give enough money for what people lost with their dignity and, you know, let alone their property, right? Right, but right. He reinforced that ap apology, but then he, he recognized my father um, as a civil rights activist, as, as an example um, of, of, fighting for our democracy. And, you know, everyone, our democracy is fragile and we can't take it for granted. Uh, and, and we need to, to, uh, to be supportive of each other and join right now to, to join those movements or those um, organizations that are uh, having programs to fight this anti-Asian violence. So your organization, um, I know the Asian Pacific Fund has grants uh, mm -hmm. that they're posting uh, for different organizations that could create programs. And another thing that, uh, that I want to promote, I did this for our own uh, Fred Korematsu Day event, um, is um, the, the bystander um, harassment um, uh, yes. uh, training, the Hollaback, Hollaback yes. bystander training. And uh, you can go to them or the other organization I'm on their board, uh, Asian Americans Advancing Justice, AAJC. Uh, they're also hosting, especially the anti-Asian uh, harassment training. And it's really, you know, there's, there's, um, there, there's these different steps that you can take. But when you think about it and you're by yourself, it's like, well, I can't, I can't do anything. Well, you can take a video or you can kind of, if you feel you're, you're strong enough, you can kind of distract. You can, mm simple tools, right? The simple yes. tools that will help you as an individual when you're by yourself um, to report it, to report the mm -hmm. incident, um, you know, to take a video, to try, try to distract um, or to, to, or if the person, if the person being attacked, let's say someone is attacking you, Michelle, and I come up and I start, I start talking to you and, and ignoring that other person that's, mm -hmm. that's random, right. And and making sure that you're okay, right? And uh, and and also if it if it means calling nine one one, they call nine one one. There's different things. It can be scary, and but and you and you don't want to put yourself in danger. So you have to think about what you would. That's why the training is so important because it can right, be those, right. those steps in your head, you know, to begin with. So you can say, okay, I remember. Yeah, I, I can take a video. Yeah, I can make a call. Yeah, I can do this. You know. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just kind of think about those things because at the end of the day, it's about helping each other. And when we help each other, then we help ourselves. Absolutely. I, I love that so much. And I know um, it was a hollaback, they call it like the five D's or something that you learn all the five steps. Yeah, yeah. We actually just built out an infographic about that and, and, and a way for people um, to kind of go to their site and learn about that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing I just want to mention real quickly is is what I've become aware of is we're discussing now um, kind of this unconscious bias, right? That mm. we all have, right? And, and we we don't think we're we're biased, but we, we do. But what I want to emphasize is we need to be conscious of our unconscious bias. Mm. Powerful, yes. And and to have those discussions and 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 to be aware of them because that that's that's kind of a, a hidden that can be kind of a hidden harmful um aspect of a reaction that we we want to be able to be prepared for right we, and and to have purposeful conversations you're my hero karen oh. <laughs> Oh, wow. Um, thank you. Thank you so, so much. And, and obviously for like understanding the whole like technical difficulties with the IG live, well, never again. <laughs> just, you know, that's, that's what happens when you interview a non-techie, you know? No, I'm not technical either. I was like, what do we do? <laughs> I can't hear each other. Um, Don't worry, we'll play well, Instagram yeah. again. I'm a big fan. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, so you like that. Maybe, maybe there's a different platform too that we can explore. Um, like I, I think like discord, it has like a very similar thing where people can like chime in yeah. um, and see the responses. So, uh, we'll definitely plan for that. Cause, um, you know, this is, this was too short of a conversation and <laughs> I, I know that there's so much more to talk about too. And, um, I would, I, you know, I would love to continue to stay in touch Yes. and, definitely. you know, collaborate in different ways. Please, please, please um, um, let us know on behalf of Hate is a Virus, like what are some things that we can help amplify your work or even the curriculums that you're building out um, for the schools. Please let us know if there's ways that we can, we can, you know, work together on that on different fronts. So that's great. Well, thank you. And uh, yeah, just putting this out on and on your social media platform and and your your website. Um, I you know if hope that it reaches somebody's ears that maybe they've learned something new that they didn't learn before. And I think that's a, that's the other point is try to learn something new every day. So what yes. I've learned is, <laughs> I don't know the, t the, tech <laughs> the technical <laughs> of Instagram. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to learn. Look at that. It is all good, it is all good. I'm so glad we were able to find a plan B. Yeah, uh, so. I could have a plan B, that's it. <laughs> Awesome. Um, well, everyone, please, please, please um, go check out koematsuinstitute.org to learn more um, and different ways that you can support um, their organization. It is a really, really great, incredible one. And obviously, Karen, you're an incredible person who is behind all of this all. So I appreciate you so much. And um, yes, thank you. A hug. <laughs> hug, air hug, <laughs> or computer hug. <laughs> all righty. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Um, and thank you so much again for okay. your time. Okay. Bye-bye okay. for now. Bye. Bye.